You are 
Yes. Good after. Jordan, 
Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Well, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Y'all thought y'all had to judge up here, didn't you? Mom and daughter. <laughs> and brother. <laughs> Hey, Naomi. Yeah. <laughs> Does your nickname Naomi? Yeah, I'm Naomi. Get on the ground. Get your shoes off. Yeah. Oh, you're a locker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. I'd rather be.
Pomalo, Ramon Belo Filho Pomalo, Ramon Belo Filho Pomalo, a promessa de andar, o sonho de andar, Ramon Belo Filho Pomalo, a gente quer relax, é foda de grass land, with the grace of God upon me and my guitar in my hand. Everybody else, I believe I can speak for about everybody in this building tonight. I don't think there's a person in here that's not got their eyes on getting to heaven. Amen. 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 You're wanting to go. Amen. And uh, we're fixing to go. Amen. And whenever I, I, I say this pretty often, I'm going to say something, and when I say it, I want to hear somebody say something. We're going to heaven. Amen. Think about it. Have you ever really stopped and thought about it? Yep. We're fixing to leave here. Whatever you got that you uh, that you think so much of, whoever it is that you think so much of, that's not made it ready to meet the Lord, you go to them and you hug their neck with everything that you got. Amen. You just tell them how much you love them. And tell them they need to be getting ready to meet the Lord. Amen. He's coming back. Yes, he is. He's coming back. He said he was. That's right. He said, I'm not slack concerning my promises, as some men count slackness. When I tell you I'm fixing to do something, I'm fixing to do it. Amen. I'm fixing to do it. Everything that he's ever said he was going to do, he's not failing any one of them. Amen. He said he was coming back, and one of these days, Gabriel was going to pick up the horn. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One of these days, Gabriel's going to pick up that horn. And the angels is going to line up. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's going to say, Gabriel, go down there and bring my people home. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
And when he does, Gabe was going to take that old horn, he's going to put it up to his mouth, mm -hmm. and he's fixing to blow as hard as he's ever blown. He's going to blow so hard that the earth is going to shake. Amen. Think about it. The earth's going to shake, and then when it begins to shake, Grandma that was ready to meet the Lord, Grandpa that was ready to meet the Lord, Mom and Dad, brothers and sisters, them that was ready to meet the Lord, you know what's fixing to happen? They've done gone on. You know what's fixing to happen? Those old graves is fixing to start busting open. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't that be a time? Amen. I'm going. Amen. I'm going. I wouldn't miss it for nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing that can keep that can come before me and being with my Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't that be a day? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what? I sang a song. I try to. And when I get there, everybody here, you're invited over to my place. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You'll probably be admiring the one you're living in Amen. so much you will forget about old Oscar Wall. <laughs> it's going to be several thousand years before I get to mine. But I'm going to hold on till I get there. Amen. Hallelujah. I've struggled and I've often known bitter tears. Riches have eluded me through all my many years. But some sweet day in heaven, a mansion waits for me. Hallelujah. And I We'll open wide those doors throughout eternity. You're all invited to our nation. Down here, I never had much, but I've always tried.
know, the world today, it's full of churches. Amen. It's full of churches. There's all kinds of churches you can go down in this little town of Freedom, and you could probably count about three, four, maybe five churches <laughs> right here in this little town. Amen. And uh, there's, you go, every, all, anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to go, you can find a church. The world today is religiously indoctrinated to the place that there's going to be a church built about every day or so in the United States. Amen. Now think about this. But you know what? The Bible teaches us now there is a spirit that you have to have within you if you're going to make it to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. There's all kinds of churches. There's all kinds of religions. There's all kinds of... Everybody has got a different thought and theory and everybody's fighting over everything. Amen. But you know what? There is something that we have to have in us in order to get to heaven. Like I said a while ago, if you know somebody or if it's something that you love real well, you go to it and if you've got a car that you love better than anything else, you go to that car and you go out and sit down in the front seat and blow the horn till the neighbors come out and tell you to shut up. <laughs> you go out and you enjoy that car. You crank that engine. Listen to that thing burn. Crank, crank, crank about five or six times. And you know, you enjoy that car the best that you can. Because I'm going to tell you something. And you, if you like this old body, you like to sit in front of the mirror and comb that hair and fix them eyebrows. And, and I don't do that. Me too. But if you like to do that, you go and you begin to do it. You enjoy that because I'm going to tell you something. That old body that you're living right here, whenever God says it's time to call my children home, that old body that I'm talking about Amen. is not going to leave here. It's going to start. It's going to be something that's going to leave here. It's going to be a spirit that is fixing to pull itself away from this place and go into the heavens Almighty. Hallelujah. You know what? In the Bible that we speak of and read about, the ten virgins. They was getting ready for a, a, a wedding. I'm going to read it to you here just in a minute. There is something about this scripture. I read it this afternoon. I looked at it and I thought, I thought there's something in here that I'm not getting. Have you ever sat down and begin to read the Bible? You read a verse and, or a chapter in the Bible and you say, somehow or another, I'm not getting the meaning to this. Amen. Somehow or another, this is slipping over me and I'm not getting it. And you go back and you read it again. You read it again. See, this afternoon I sat down and I began to read. Read the... the, the, the well, I, I'll, I'll just read you a little bit of it and then we'll just go from that. Brother Ed, would you ask a blessing on, this, on the, the Scriptures tonight, please? Heavenly Father, as Oscar brings the message that you've given him to give us tonight, Lord, I pray that you'd open each heart, mind, and soul in this auditorium that we can take it in, Lord, and may it somehow help your light to shine through us to a lost and dying world. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 If you've got your Bible, turn to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Now, I, I may go a little slow. I may get in a hurry. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, I, now before, we, before we get into this, let's go into just a little bit of history. Back into the biblical days when, when Jesus was walking the, the face of the earth in the eastern part of, of Israel or in the eastern part of Asia there was a, there, they had different methods for each uh, wedding now in the, in the eastern part of, the, of the, that country they had a wedding they set a time for that wedding they set a time for it and then, the, then whenever that time that hour that day come they all got together and they would have that wedding right then I almost said funeral <laughs> they would have that wedding right then and, and, and it was all over with in the Oriental part of, of, of the country and they, they would go there and they would just basically do about the same thing they would get the wedding all get together and then they would have the wedding it would be a little bit and it would be all over with but in the eastern part in the eastern part of that part of the country was Israel well, whenever they got ready to have a, have a wedding, you didn't know if it had to come, it had to start after midnight. 
It had to start after midnight, to, and, but you never knew when the bridegroom was going to show up. You just knew that there was going to be a wedding, and you had to prepare yourself for the wedding. And then whenever the wedding come around, there was these people that would take the take the, the their lamps, and they would put them lamps on a big stick, and they would hold them up in the air. And when the bridegroom come out, they would light those lamps, and they would go marching through the city or through the town. They would make a big circle, and they would come back to the place where the uh, the wedding was about to take place. But you didn't know what hour that that was going to know going to happen. You just knew that after twelve o'clock at night or after midnight. That's when, the, if sometime or another between there and daylight, that's whenever the wedding was going to take place. See, there was there was there was ten virgins. I just read it to you, and they went. They, they came. Now listen to what it says. And I want to get to it. And five of them were wise, and five were county wise. Foolish. What did that say? <coughs> foolish. 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 And five was foolish. See, we're living, I told you a while ago, we're living in a church world right now. There's all kinds of churches all over the country. There's all kinds of people. Listen, let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus Christ, uh, He only made one plan of salvation. He didn't make 120 or 150 different types of, 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 uh, of ways to get saved. He made one way. And how He made that way, and I, I can't keep from throwing this in every time that I preach a sermon. I, I want people to know. I want you to know about the good news. I want you to, to hear the gospel. I want you to hear what it is that we're, we're able to set out for and what it is that we're going to do in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. He died on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. He died on the cross. And on the third day, the stone was rolled back. Amen. Hallelujah. See something come with this, and on the, and, on, and whenever he died on that cross, and, and he cried, "It is finished." There's something that happened on the hillside across from Golgotha. Hallelujah! The temple veil began to trip, and he come all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom. We don't have to go before the priest no more. We don't have to go before. All we got to do is look straight into the Holy of Holies uh, and say, Jesus Christ, uh, will you forgive me of my sins? Uh, and let me tell you something, my friend. Uh, you'll wake up. You'll rise up uh, a new person. Amen. If you didn't, you're in trouble. I'm going to get to this just in a minute. I'm going to read just a little more. Stay with me, all right? But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Get ready. Got to get ready because we're going to go out in a minute. But remember this. Remember what I just read. <coughs> He said there was five that was foolish and there was five that were wise. The wise one had something that the the, one, the foolish ones did not have. Amen. They had the anointing of God all right, spiritually speaking in their lives. Amen. Like we are today. We have got to have that Spirit of God within us if you go into a church or, or some place where you can't feel the, the anointing and the power of God, you better find you a place where you can go and Amen. feel the presence of God. Amen. If you're sent somewhere that you can't feel the presence of God, or if your life gets into the place uh, that you can't feel the presence of God every once in a while, you better be finding a place uh, where you can fall on your face before God Amen. and say, God, uh, there's something like in my life. Uh, I need you to bring the anointing uh, I need the oil in my lamp. I, I need to put out a light. It's time that we begin to think, Oh God, I need something from you. Amen. See these bridegrooms, these that had the oil. They were wise people. They had the oil. They had something in their life. Tonight, let's, let me ask you something. Examine yourself right now. Do you have the oil in your lamp? Do you have something in your lamp if the bridegroom was to say, I'm coming back tonight. And Gabriel, like I was talking a while ago, begins to blow on the trumpet. What kind of oil are you going to have? You're not going to have time to get everything ready when the trumpet sounds. 
Right. You better have that oil lamp. Uh, you better have it trimmed. Uh, you better be ready to go whenever he calls. Right. You know, See, if you're sitting somewhere or if you can't feel the presence of God, something's wrong. You need to be found, find you a place where you can feel the presence of God. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about somewhere where you can feel the presence of God. Amen. I don't care where it is. If it's in your back room, go back there and pray till you can feel the presence of God. Amen. If it's sitting in your recliner in your living room and you can't feel the presence of God, get on to, get in that recliner, bury your back into it and begin to say, God, I need a touch from you. I need to feel the Spirit of God. And it's not long. You know what's going to happen? The Spirit of God's going to begin to move in your That's life. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And whenever that Spirit of God begins to move, the oil begins to come up, the oil, the, the lamp begins to burn. And when the lamp begins to burn, and if Jesus says it's time for me to go, let me tell you something. We're going to leave here. Forget about everything else. You're not going to take nothing with you. That's right. This old body that you love so well, that you sit in front of the mirror and crimp off, it is not going. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not going to leave here. Let's just read on a little further. Then all those virgins arose and trim their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Now, you know, I thought about that right there. The first of the scripture, it says they went out there and they didn't have no oil. Then you read on down a little further, and it says that they said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have went out. Yeah, I just read it. Sometime or another, there is people that have their oil in their lamps. They've got their wigs trimmed, and they've been living for God. Amen. Say, don't get on backslide. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I backslid and I didn't want that to tell me about the Lord. Don't come to my house trying to tell me about the Lord. I'm going to run you off. I've been to some cold services. I almost backslid. I'm telling you. But let me tell you something. At one time or another, those virgins had the, had the oil in their lamps. Them oil lamps had been burning. Somebody today has been preaching a message that has made people sit down and want to quit going to church. They've been hurt in church. Some of the old sister or brother has run their mouth and got people to the place they don't want even go to church no more. Amen. 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 Come on. How many people? I bet you. I, now here I'm betting right in church. <laughs> I'll guarantee you that there's not a person in this church tonight what at some time or another somebody's made some catty remark that made you say, I'm not going back to church no more. Amen. Amen. I'm going back to that church. Yep. Your lamps had oil in it. They were burning. You got to the place, I don't want to go to church no more. I have no reason to want to go to church anymore. Somebody has made some kind of remark. If that's all I'm going to have to listen to, you know what? I'm better off. How many times have you heard this? I'm better off to stay at home and watch TV. Uh, yep. Or yep. I hear a good preacher every Sunday morning. And you know what the devil's going to do? Move in and He's going to take that preacher that hadn't got no oil in his lamp. And he's going to preach you what you want to hear. Mm. And the next thing you know, you're having out of church for three months, and anybody says anything to you about going to church, I don't care about going to church. I don't have to watch it on TV. Yeah. Come on, people, let's wake up. Amen. We're not Amen. serving a dead God. Amen. We're serving Amen. a living God. Amen. We're serving a God. If you go to Him and talk to Him, you know what He'll do? He'll put oil in your lamp. Amen. He'll make you want to get up on Sunday morning and go to church. Amen. He'll make you want to go to church on Thursday night. Amen. You'll be looking forward for, for Sunday morning, the next Sunday morning. Amen. You'll say, I can't wait to get there. Amen. You know why? Because God has put the oil in your lamp. You're ready to let it shine. You're ready to march through the city and hold it up for everybody can see and say, guess what? I'm a Christian. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad that people know that I'm a Christian. Amen. You know, I've seen a time in my life, and I'm serious, I've seen a time in my life, I didn't want nobody even talking to me about Christianity. 
Hmm? Whenever I, I seen a time in my life that I needed, I needed the church world to stand behind me, and they turned their back and walked away. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me. Because I walked away wasn't the right thing to do. But I let the oil leak out of my lamp. I let it all burn out. I burned all the oil out of my lamp. What I needed was to not get out of church. What I needed to just move on to another place, get on my knees and pray till God give me the oil in my lamp that I could shine. See, a lot of times God will keep you, or the devil will keep you in one place until you get to the place that you don't even care about where you go to church or not. Amen. See, he's smart. I don't like to give the devil credit for anything. Amen. I don't I I don't want to give the devil credit for anything, but I gotta give him credit for one thing. He is smart. He's smart. He knows how to get you to the place that your lamp will go out. You always burn out. And whenever it comes time for God to move in your life, you know what you say? Will you let me borrow from your oil? Let me borrow from your oil that I can go and let my light shine. Amen. It don't work that way. That's right. Hallelujah. Just like I said a while ago. Whenever you leave here, I don't care what you got. If you got ten billion dollars piled up, you got it piled up to the ceiling. Ain't gonna do you no good. And hundred dollar bills. <laughs> but whenever God says it's time for me to bring you home, Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, "What is it profit a man?" Though he gained the whole world. Got it all. Can write a check on the whole world. I'll just write you a check on Egypt today. I'll just write you a check on, the, on Canada today. I'll write you a check on Mexico today. It's all mine. I can do what I want to with it. Whenever Jesus says it's time to come home, maybe not through the rapture, but just says it's time for you to come home. I'm bringing you home today. Though you've gained the whole world and you lose your soul. You lose your soul. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You give You'll change. stand just like me, Ed, Mike, Amen. everybody else. You'll stand before God. That's right, make an account. And what are you going to do? Are you going to look around then and say, Brother Ed, will you let me have just a little bit of your oil? Hallelujah. Will you just let me have a little bit of your oil so that I can stand before God and say, Here, Lord, I've got a little <coughs> bit of oil in my lamp. My lamps are burning. When you leave here, this light goes out. That light goes out with you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read just a little more. But the wise answer is saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. <laughs> As were they also the others virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, today we might be sitting here in this church you know, in, in the next 30 minutes, everybody that's in this building, look at your neighbor. Everybody that's in this building could be sitting here looking at each other. In 30 minutes, think about this. In 30 minutes, you could be standing before the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You could be standing right there looking at the yes. Lord. You yes. could be right there. In the next 30 minutes, let's cut it in half. In the next 15 minutes, you could be standing that's before right. the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In the next 15 minutes, let's cut it even on down further. In the next 10 minutes, you can hear the trumpet of the Lord sound. The earth begin to shake. We're out of here. That's right. Thank you, Lord. We're going to scoot.
You can cut his daughter in half. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before, I said ten minutes. Let's link. cut her on down a little further. Let's go to five minutes. Amen. Let's go to five minutes. Now let's get our minds on where we are right now. Amen. We're sitting right here in this building. You're sitting and you're looking at me. You're hearing me talk. Hallelujah. Let's cut it in half. I'll be somewhere listening. Hallelujah. Let's cut it in half the next two and a half minutes. The next two and a half minutes, we could be standing before the throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Cut it in half. Let's cut it in half. Forty five seconds. Hallelujah. <laughs> I feel the anointing of the Lord. Right now I feel something. I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be something if all of a sudden Hallelujah? Something begin to shake. The earth begin to shake. We begin to hear a trumpet sound. And all of a sudden, we look over. And everybody that's next to you, they begin to pull the step away from And all of a sudden, you look up. And everybody's gone. Amen. <coughs> Wanda, go play that song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't you want to go? Amen. Don't you want to go to heaven? Yes. yes. You know what? There's not a person in this building that I just happen to be here. Amen. You just didn't happen to show up here. Amen. You didn't. You're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. That's right. You're here because God wants you in this building right now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is a living God. Amen. The Bible says God is a spirit. He said God is love. You want to see God? Watch somebody that loves somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch people that love one another. You can see God begin to blossom. You can see God begin to roll. Hallelujah. Let's get our mind on the road right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. 
We're fixing to get out of here. The bride of Jesus. He's almost through. The gates of heaven. Well, they've just been hewn. Then we'll enter. That's it. Thank you. Brother Mike, Amen. I'll reach my hand out you, and I'll shake your hand. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Lord right now. Glad we made it. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say, Mike, we made it. Amen. I'm going to go to Ed and Ed's going to be coming to me. I'm going to be running to you and I'm going to say, we made it. Amen. Look, we made it. Here Amen. we look around and what I can't even explain, there's no way that I can explain what we're going to be looking at, Amen. but we're going to be looking at one of the glorious things Amen. that you never see in your entire life. Hallelujah. You're going to say, I just thank God that I made it. Amen. 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 And then, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. You don't Hallelujah. feel that? There's something Thank wrong, you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then, you know what I'm fixing to do? I'm going to walk up close to the throne. Amen. And when my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yes. oh, whenever you, He comes walking. Hallelujah. You, when He comes walking out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm oh, going to walk up to him, Brother Ed. I'm going to reach my hand out. And he's going to reach his hand out. And when I look at his hand oh, you, with Lord. that nail scarred in his hand, you know what I'm fixing to do? I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you for Amen. what you've done for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have a Holy Ghost fit. I'm going to be screaming and hollering. I'm going to be running all over that place. Amen. You say, I'm not. I'm going to sit there real quiet. Uh -uh. I don't think so. That ain't going to happen. Sorry. You know what you're going to be doing? You're going to be laughing. Rejoicing. You're going to be rejoicing. You're going to be shouting. Amen. The angels of the Lord, we're going to sing a song that the angels have to stand back at and they can't sing it. Amen. Hallelujah. This thing that we got right now, the angels desire to look into it. They would give anything if they could fall on their knees and say, God, forgive me of my sin. Amen. Amen. They can't. Get to run up to my old grandmother and hug her and say, Mom, Hallelujah. Mom, Think about it. Oh, Think Lord, about it. Lord, Lord, Lord. What are we going to be saying? I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed by, the by the blood, blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the, the blood, blood of the Lamb. Lamb. I'm fixing to have a fit. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, you think I'm crazy now? Wait till I get over the yard. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Me and Mike going to be running foot races. That's right. You know, we got something to look forward to. I do. We got something to look forward to. Knowing that we're going to inherit that city. Amen. We're going to take it over. Hallelujah. Somebody said they wrote a song. Lord, just give me a cabin in the corner. Uh, that. Don't come to me at no cabin. I've lived in one down here all my life. I don't want one. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I don't want one. I don't want to build a fort. I want that mansion. Uh -uh. Don't want to build a fort. The climate's going to be perfect. How many times have you heard somebody say, I'd give anything if it stays 78 degrees all year long. I said it. I did too. Up there, it's going to be perfect. Amen. 
74. It's going to be perfect. Ain't going to need no coat. No. Ain't going to need no that. Suit. Hospital is out of business. That's right. Hallelujah. The doctors will just stand there and look. The minister will be born God. again, then they'll be shot. That's right. Thank you. Think about it. Think about it. We're going somewhere. Amen. We're going somewhere. We're not just standing here talking about it. One of these days, you know, it's hard for me to get over to people tonight. One of these days, we're going to be standing Amen. before the throne of God. Amen. We're going to be there. Amen. We're going to need no light because there's not going to be any darkness. No. Hallelujah. He said, I'll be the light. Amen. So He's going to be the light. light. Hallelujah. Won't that be something? No. Man, I'll go down beside that old river. Mm -hmm. I'll kick my sandals off. Hallelujah. And I'll just roll my robe up about right here. <laughs> I'll take and I'll stick my feet right into that old river. River of joy. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to ask old Jonah how it felt like being at the wheel's belly for three days. Hallelujah. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach up and get that fruit off that stick. Oh, off yeah. That fruit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The juice is going to fly. Hallelujah. Thought corn on the cob butter was good. <laughs> <laughs> if I could in any way, you know, I, I try the way I can to try to picture what heaven's going to be like. Listen to me, people. Everybody that's sitting in this building right now, we're going to be there. God gave us a promise. That's right. Amen. Simple little promise. John three sixteen. He said, "For God so loved the world." That he gave his only begotten son. We know that's happened. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. We ain't going to need no clock. Don't have to worry about setting an alarm clock to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. We ain't going to care whether we get up or not. I know it's saying that some people will hear this and say, that's the biggest fairy tale I've heard in my entire life. This is for real. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, this is. is for real. What I'm telling you about tonight is fixing to happen. That's right. There's nothing can stop it. It's fixing to happen. The devil can try, then what do you think he's doing? Why does he think he puts everything on you that he can't? And sometimes it seems like it's almost everything that you can take. Amen. Because he don't you know want why he's doing it? He don't want you because to he knows what's waiting for you, and he knows what's waiting for him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's all right. Hallelujah. He knows what it is that he's going to get. Yep. And he also knows what it is that you're going to take. And he wants to take you Hallelujah. with him. Won't that be something? Amen. First week, Hallelujah. We've been to church every night of the week. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't that be something? Amen. Won't that be something? Hallelujah. Eternity. Forever. Amen. Ever. You don't Ever. Not spend eternity either. Yeah, no, no, no. He's going to be done to spend an eternity. Live eternity. You know what the first day of heaven will be like? You take a, I've said this before, you take a stainless steel ball, eight foot around. Eight foot around. Solid. And a little sparrow come by and just bump his wing against that stainless steel ball. When that stainless steel ball is wore down to, to nothing, heaven... It's just begun. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love him tonight? Amen. Amen. He done this for us. That's right. He made it so simple. He said even a wayfaring fool can understand. That's right. Amen. Why well, want to make it complicated when it's as simple as it can be? Hallelujah. I'm fixing the clothes. I think. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you love him tonight? Yeah, amen. Yeah. He has done all this for you. Yes. He's done it for you. Johnny, he done it for you. Amen. And you know what? If it only been you, or if it only been me, he'd have went and laid on that cross and gave his life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're in a world right now. I, th I, I predicted it to happen. It's happened a little sooner than I thought it would. We're living in a world right now that our freedom of worship is being threatened. Amen. Severely threatened. Yes. Yep. Every day that you turn your TV on or, or your radio, it's something that the devil is trying to throw a curve at you with. Mm -hmm. 
You can't get up and preach against the things. But yeah, I can. Well, you know, I, I, I if, if they throw me in prison, that's all right. Because I read a lot of the stuff that, that's really written in the Bible. I read, it, I read it from an old boy that was sitting in prison when he was writing it. Yep. So it ain't going to bother me. They throw me in jail. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right now. Amen. I'm going to tell you what's wrong what's right. The best I can. Hallelujah. I'm fixing the clothes. I'll bring you a Bible with a hacksaw in it. All right. <laughs> That'll work. Mike can drive the getaway car. <laughs> uh, Lord, Lord takes care of all of that, just like he did old Peter. Just broke him up and said, get up. Put on your sandals, wrap your robe around you. We're going out of here. Hallelujah. We're leaving here. God's coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back after our people that is what? That is made themselves ready. ready. Made themselves ready. Sometimes it seems like it's hard to live for the Lord. Sometimes we have to just make ourselves do it. Amen. We do. We just have to make ourselves do it. Sometimes it's hard. And I'm not saying it's easy a lot of times. But sometimes it's hard. And you know what we got to do? we got to make it happen. Well, He didn't promise us it would be easy. Huh? huh? There's no promise in the Bible where it says it's going to be an easy road to walk. Remember this. We have Sunday school here, Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 10 o'clock, 